All right, hi, I'm Laura Anderson. I'm the owner and founder of Local Ocean Seafoods in Newport, Oregon. And I'm here to talk about one of my favorite fish and fisheries, albacore tuna. So albacore tuna have a huge range, uh, actually across the entire North Pacific Ocean. They can form schools sometimes 15 miles wide with thousands of fish in them. Yet Oregon fishermen catch each fish one by one with hook and line, catching them one at a time. This is a fishing method that's known as trolling, and it actually targets some of the younger, smaller fish that have high omega-3 oil content and are very low in mercury. Uh, a few little fun facts about the Oregon tuna fleet. The season for tuna isn't really set by a government agency. It's just when the tuna actually show up here. Oftentimes it's in early to mid-July when we start seeing tuna off our coast. And typically they're gone by about October. Each boat might have two to five crew person on there and they can stay out for as short as a day or as long as two months if they have freezing capacity on the boat. Most boats are about 20 feet is pretty small, 65 feet is a pretty good sized tuna boat and they'll travel anywhere from 10 to 100 miles offshore to go catch their tuna. The tuna travel really fast. They can travel even 100 miles a day, uh, which is a pretty good thing. They can go 50 miles an hour in short bursts. They've got a long journey to make every year to make it all the way around to Japan, over to the South Pacific Islands, and then back to the Oregon coast. Could talk a little bit about the sustainability of the fishery. Three of the things that we look at when determining Fisheries uh, sustainability are habitat, the fish population, and whether or not the fishery is selective. When it comes to habitat, you can't do better than fishing for albacore tuna. Because these hooks are right on the surface of the water, there's absolutely zero habitat impact. Um, also with selectivity, because they're catching each fish one at a time, on the ocean surface, there's essentially zero bycatch of other fish. And even though uh, other tunas swim with dolphins, albacore generally keep to themselves. As far as the population goes, it's kind of difficult to have a good stock assessment of albacore, but it's considered pretty stable. Fishermen have been catching about the same amount of fish for the same amount of effort over a long period of time. And so uh, we also know that albacore can grow pretty quickly and they're highly reproductive. So that's pretty good for their resistance to fishing pressure. The big picture for albacore is that it often gets confused with other species in the market. At local ocean, a lot of times we have people come in and they say, do you have ahi? Or they'll order, want to order the ahi. And albacore are not ahi. Our albacore here are usually around one and a half to three feet long. And uh, an average fish this season weighs about 15 pounds. What we call ahi are also big eye and yellowfin tuna are found further south off of Hawaii and they're about twice as big and they're fished using different gear also. Actually some of the biggest fish in the ocean include bluefin tunas. Bluefin tunas can be six to seven feet long and weigh over a thousand pounds. This is often that really highly prized uh, sushi that you may see in the uh, sashimi market. In fact, a single fish once sold for $1.8 million in the Japanese market, which is an incredible uh, amount of money for a single fish. The smallest of all the major types of tuna is the little skipjack, and that's typically what goes into the cans now. Again, that's a South Pacific fishery, not here. So 99% of our catch is albacore. It's all albacore, it's all hook and line, all one at a time. 
A little quick history about Owl Cortuna on the Oregon coast. Really at the beginning of the 1900s was when we started catching and canning albacore and the Columbia River Packers Association in Astoria was the first to do so. It was really important for feeding troops during World War I and II because it's a very portable, nutrient-rich food when you have albacore in a can. And from the 1940s to the 1960s, the whole tuna fishery really grew. New boats were built, vessel refrigeration systems started, and tuna catches were increasing by the ton. The Columbia River Packers changed its name to Bumblebee Tuna, which a lot of us still know today. And more canneries, large and small, followed suit on the coast, including pretty major packers like Starkist and Chicken of the Sea. But in the early 1980s, with the development of global markets, that whole industry left the Oregon coast, went overseas, uh, mostly to the South Pacific, and kind of left our Oregon fishermen in the wake of globalization. But now here we are in uh, 2020, and we still have some micro canneries on the Oregon coast that satisfy many of our love for that pantry staple. But new albacore tuna products are made possible now because of improved freezing on board. Flash freezing minimizes that time between harvest and freezing and really captures fish at its peak of perfection. So that, that simple technology really revolutionized the fishery and really brought albacore tuna to the center of the plate. And in fact, Enrique, Chef Enrique at Local Ocean has some great recipes to share with you that will highlight some of our fantastic sashimi grade albacore tuna. So here's three fun health facts about albacore tuna. It is one of the best sources of omega-3 fatty acids and has some of the highest anti-inflammatory and health benefits of any nutrient. And the, the risk of cardiovascular disease is significantly reduced when a combination of tuna and other oily fish like salmon are eaten twice a week. And you're likely to get more omega-3s from canned albacore than canned light tuna, which is typically the smaller skipjack. So when you're out there, make sure you're looking for albacore tuna, and you can also look for the Marine Stewardship Council label, which certifies that your catch was sustainably harvested.